piano. Miss Becky, um, Mr. Pas I don't know his name. Something Lassiter. Tim Lassiter. Tim Lassiter. He um has filled in here before. Yeah, he's been here before, yeah. Josh met him at the pastor's meetings that day with Randy Carter, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know why they're here. They're just visiting. He said that he was going to, uh, he told the pastor that he would stop in here one one Sunday, and here they are. Wow. But that's his wife, Miss Becky, playing the piano. Oh, okay. So they kept me entertained while I was opening up this morning. Music. <laughs> Usually it's just oh, me. Yeah, I, got, I actually got cash. Well, it's a miracle. Let's see if I can. Father, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I have a little brag that I've Oh, I do have a couple few dollars. Here, Brandon, put that in. Well, I'm just too long. Brandon, you already came. So, uh, when I come oh, to double. church, I okay. got it. Yes. Okay. This is the uh, first class of the Peter epistles. And, uh, and we're going to go on to uh, later on about, uh, about prayer and that kind of a thing. And, <clears throat> and we talked about uh, the last lesson we've been through. It talks about what kind of people uh, that we're supposed to be or what kind of people that we are. And today we're supposed to be, uh, not, not just today, but in, you know, in our life. We're supposed to be a, a discerning and a persevering people. And of course, discerning means you're using good judgment and wisdom and that kind of a thing to uh, understand what you're reading, studying, or learning, so you can apply it to your life in a proper way. And persevering means to, where you keep on keeping on. You're a steadfast people where, in, in spite of the difficulties, uh, like sometimes we have problems getting to church, we have problems coming to church, and Somehow we want to give up. I say, I'm not even going to go today. But we, we, we keep on, we press on, we find we our clothes, we find our keys or whatever it may be and fight the traffic and fight the weather, whatever, but we, we keep on and we come back the next week and the next week and the next week and we keep on keeping on. And in our, in our faith, in our walk with Christ, uh, of all the difficulties that we have in our life, whether it be physical or mental or emotional or financial, whatever it is, we don't give up. Right. We press on and we just look to the Lord, continue to look to Him and trust Him and believe in Him that He will make a way. Now, if He calls us to do a certain thing, that uh, one way or another He will provide. And we not need, need worry about it. Uh, not be concerned about it. He's going to be there and He's going to take care of it. Like when He called Gideon and Moses and so many others, they didn't want to go because they were afraid. And, you know, I, I can't do it, I can't do it. And, and whether they're right, they can't do it. We can't do it either without Christ's help. But if He calls us, He'll... Uh, He'll give us what we need. We call it Pastor Josh and Sister Kelly here to minister to us and minister to the people around us. So he's going to provide all that they have need of so they can accomplish what he called them here to do. No doubt in my mind. What they have need of, he will provide. He'll make sure they got it, what it really is. I'm so grateful that we have children being baptized today. Yep. We haven't done that in a long time. I don't think I've ever seen a child baptized in this church. I don't think I've even heard someone ask for them to accept Christ. Things are going to change. It's going to be a little different. But it's going to be good. Amen. All good. I'll be with you. Uh-uh. 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 Oh, no. Josh is younger and okay. he understands. Yeah. I love also that the Bible says love everybody. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I really want to have fun loving everybody, too. Yeah. That's a good them. thing. Yeah. Somebody like to read the key verse today? The golden text? I will. Okay. I will. <laughs> Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Amen. Let you one to read. Um, we're also going to read a little uh, something about Jude uh, this morning. But they both instructed God's people on how they should recognize and respond to uh, false teachers. I mean, they're all out there in the world. They always have been from the beginning. People trying to deceive and 
pervert and twist the word of God and make, a, make out of it what they want to make out of it. And by discernment, we're supposed to weed them out, so to speak, and understand that what we're being taught, uh, whether it's true or not true. Uh, I, I get up here, and I teach out of the book every morning. And, and I, I, mean, I, I know what this is going on here, what is going on here, and what the, word, you know, what the Lord intends. But I could, because I know so much, I could tweak things a little bit and change things a little bit and come in under the radar, so to speak, and be teaching you something that's not true. And unless you know your word, unless you compare what I'm telling you to what the word really says, you wouldn't know the difference, and you could be deceived. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to do when you know the word. You can uh, you can do it if you know people. If they're, you know, if they're not as uh, knowledgeable as the word, if they don't study the word. But if you study the word, you ain't got to worry about that, because you'll know somebody's teaching you not the truth. Uh, started back way back in the, you know, in, in the beginning of creation when Satan slipped in. And uh, the seed that Adam and Eve, and you use scripture to deceive them, kind of slipped it under the radar and deceived them and got them trying to pull them away from God. Pull them away from the truth. And people do it today in all forms and fashion, especially our young people and our children, because they don't know the word like we do. We've learned it, we, we, you know, we learn it every week, we learn it in the home, we study, we understand. But young people, they don't, they don't know, they don't have that knowledge in them because they haven't been in the Word that long. And it's easy for somebody to slip in and deceive our young people and pull them away from the Lord. And they do it a little, little bit at a time, just a little bit at a time. Put a whole lot of truth and a little bit of lie, the lies covered up by all the truth. And can be deceived very easily. So it's up to us to help them understand what the uh, truth is and get them to uh, walk the right way. Have anybody here ever... Uh, are you familiar, have you heard or, or experienced anybody with a, a false teacher that was teaching a false doctrine, trying to pull you away from the Lord in some form or fashion? In our county, um, the Masons are really big. Um, and in some churches, a lot of people think that that's, you know, it's a brotherhood and that kind of thing. Um, I have never actually been in, but a lot of people say that there's a lot of false teachings in it. I, you know, that's the only thing that I can say personally my family has been involved in, but other than that, you know, we've always stuck with the Pentecostal. Yeah, I've done, I've done some studying and reading on it, and yeah, they're, uh, you get higher up on there, and yeah. it's, it's, it's quite nasty. Mm -hmm. yeah, now I've never experienced anybody that, uh, a false teaching that would try to pull me away from the Lord, uh, not like they're talking about here about you know not believing in Christ's return and that kind of thing, but you know, I have experienced in this church right here. Uh, there was a fellow came to one time and he was uh, using the scripture. And he was selling um, vitamins and supplements and that kind of a thing, and uh, he was you know teaching people about not eating meat. And sometimes meat is bad for you, of course, and you know, fruits and vegetables are good, and that's the truth about that. <clears throat> uh, we were all getting into it, buying the videos, buying the tapes, buying some of his wares, and but then I heard him. Uh, one night back in the Bible study, he was talking about how he said that uh, not only is meat bad for you, but uh, God didn't want us. To, uh, God wanted us. <clears throat> God wanted us to eat meat because God knew it was bad for us, and He knew it would kill us and send us to an early grave and give us a short life. So that's why God told us in the Scripture that all meat we could eat anything we wanted to, because He knew we would do it because it tastes good, and it would shorten our life. And when I heard that, I said, "Oh." Because yeah, they didn't already read part of it on there, because then you get to where Moses was given the thing on there, and he was talking about what was clean and what was unclean. Yeah, he used scriptures like that to you know keep people from. Uh, you know, he was just trying to sell his goods more or less. But after Is this that, guy still alive? Well, I don't know. He just came here a while and came in here a few weeks on you know, after a Bible study and was you know, selling his goods. But after that, I wonder I, how clean his genetics are, because you know high blood pressure and. Cholesterol and heart disease and all that kind of stuff has nothing to do with what you eat. So, you know, I'd like to argue that point with him. I'm, I'm, I like meat. <laughs> yeah. But after that, I quit the. That's you know only one of the uh, like false doctrines that I've you know, and he wasn't really trying to pull us away from salvation, not get us to believe in Christ, but it just it just turned know, the words around. Yeah. yeah. It just uh, maybe he just didn't know, or he was trying to sell it as good as one of the other, but and there was a. Some people here have come to this church one time, and because of, uh, <clears throat> you know, they believed in uh, reincarnation, and they believed that everybody was going to be reincarnated and come back, uh, you know, and, 
And because of that, that belief they had, and they wanted to do a Bible study, and of course we weren't going to do it because that's not true. And But because of that, that goes on to where some people believe that when they die, they're going to be reincarnated and come back, and they can come back as a dog or a cat or, you know, whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> 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 and I wonder if I do, I want to come back as my dog. Show me that dog. here. <laughs> If you come back as a raccoon, if you come here, uh, I'm going to put you out. If I look, I come back as a rat. That is my <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to do something really bad. I'm seeing baby birds so much now. They are so cute. Mm -hmm. They do. They are in their 40s. They do. They do. Uh-uh. I know that. They have it. It's all red, tall, webbing. Well, 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 I mean, yeah, well, I mean, it's a shirt, one, well, well, one, yeah, uh, uh, under, under, okay, his, his name, top, top, mine, head. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> yeah. A senior moment, but uh, a lot of young people do it, so I can't be too senior. <laughs> we turn to the book of uh, Second Peter, chapter two. I'm going to start out there, and we're talking about false prophets, about how they can slip in under the radar, but you know they can be that way by being very educated, uh, you know, be very persuasive and charismatic, and uh, you know, talk a good talk, and they can persuade people uh, to come their way and follow them and not follow the Lord. And a lot of people do. I'm going to read 1 through 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there were, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, or destructive ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, exploit you, whose judgment now of a long time lingered not, and their damnation slumbered not. I mean, it's going to happen quickly. They're, going, they're not going to be here very long. Like you're asking about the other guy if he's still here. Uh, of course, he wasn't denying the Lord, but uh, it's just not truth is what he was talking about. And in some people's eyes, it would make the Lord look bad because he's, you know, they're thinking that the Lord's trying to send us to an early grave. Well, that's not what the, uh, the Lord's all about. A lot of people get there, but uh, not because of Him. And false teaching does always begin straight out with something, you know, straight out wrong, so people turn away from it. You usually come down with something really good and something really right, something sweet, something that appeals to the flesh and uh, not necessarily to the spirit, to get you drew in. And once you get drew in, they get you to follow them and not follow the Lord. If you put them up on a pedestal and you you think highly of them, they do great things, they're great people, and you know it's got to be from God because of who they are and what they do. And the whole time it's just a trick to draw you in, to pull you slowly, inch you away from following the truth. It happens every day, it happens all the time. Uh, it reminds me of that uh, Jim Jones, I think was his name, where he mm -hmm. leaned on the people and they, uh, <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. some uh, powerful stuff. <laughs> and uh, you know, but stuff goes on all across the world where. Uh, cults and false doctrines and teachers and <clears throat> so if we're not you know comparing what's being taught but if you're not comparing what I'm teaching you to what's in the word you should be because I'm not that I would I wouldn't but, but, you, but you never know I mean somebody else could or it's just always good to confirm what's being taught by me or whoever's in the pulpit or whatever whoever's in the, you know whatever you know whatever you learn on TV watching on TV or whatever your book you're reading Compare it to the word. Sometimes we get so blind about who's speaking it, and we want to trust that person that we would let things slide. You know, like I trust you as a man of God that you wouldn't, you know, you, that you wouldn't tell me anything wrong. And if you do, I, you know, there's a lot of naive Christians. I mean, you know, baby Christians kind of thing yeah. that come in and they say, "Oh, well, he he said I can do this, I can do this, I can do this," and he he wouldn't lie to me. You know, and they trust the man over the Bible, and then mm -hmm. it's like, because uh, a lot of people can't understand this, you know what I mean, until you get further into it. And so, you know, we have to pray up and, and 
you know, when that gut feeling says, mm, that, don't, that don't sound right. It ain't a stomach ache. It's, that's the Holy Spirit telling you something ain't right. Yeah. It happens too often sometimes, unfortunately. Who ain't ever heard trauma through my mind? Trauma. My, my, my 18, 24, this is, this is on the day who may we will rejoice to be that in it. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that, that's which Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 18, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, 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 that verse. about uh, how the you know, uh, false teaching came back from the beginning of the Garden of Eden when Satan went in and deceived Adam and Eve. And, you know, false prophets live today. They've lived throughout uh, Israel's life and living in the world today, and they do the same thing. They come in under the radar and get people to uh, pull away from the truth. It's just important that we know, but it's, sometimes it's hard to recognize because they do it so, uh, so slickly, so to speak. Uh, <clears throat> but the... Uh, we just have to be careful about uh, who we're listening to on TV, what books we buy, magazines you look at, and that kind of a thing, and some of the doctrines that uh, people are taught. Even the music, just uh, just because they call it Christian doesn't mean it's always Christian. Mm-hmm. Yep. The words, uh, the music can sound really good, but the words are what you have to pay attention to to uh, make sure that you're uh, getting the truth and not being uh, pulled away. But there's a, normally it's human greed and human lust and uh, <clears throat> that drive false teachers because they're uh, a lot of they get people to almost worship them and support them and take care of them rather than supporting the Lord or the ministry. It's uh, full of greed and uh, power hungry and they want to be all powerful and uh, sometimes they're just full of the devil and they want to see as many as they can get pulled away from the Lord uh, so Satan would be happy. So we have to be very careful about what we do, and I mean, these things are all, all real today in the world, especially around the young people. It, uh, some of these guys, are, some of the women are just very, you know, the way they talk uh, are very persuasive, and they can really draw you in about uh, uh, different things that uh, kind of mess your life up. And they have some printouts, I know we're not going to get time, time for another 52. It asked about, are you vulnerable? And you can put yourself in these shoes. About, uh, People are introduced slowly into what the, this is what happened. False teachers use deception. They often claim to be supporting worthwhile causes, and the people involved in their group seem to be happy. People are introduced slowly into what the group believes, so it can be hard to realize you are gradually accepting ideas and practices you would have previously rejected. Often there is just enough truth in what they say to appear to be based on biblical principles. But the whole time there's a Another uh, motive behind what they're teaching and what you can get to do uh, to pull you away from the Lord. Some people use fear and intimidation. They teach that disagreeing with them is a disagreeing with God. And followers are not allowed to question what the leader says. These are different cultures around in the world today. And relationship control. False teachers often require their followers to have friends only from their group. Relationships with people outside the group, including family, are discouraged. And they can use scripture for a lot of this stuff to uh, enforce, but they're, you know, they're twisting the scripture. And information control. False teachers set themselves up as the source of all information. They do not want followers to get information from any source that may be critical to them or the teaching. Like we just said, somebody that you trust and believe in, no matter what they say, because you trust them, you're going to just uh, go along with it and never... Find out for yourself whether it's the truth or not. It happens all the time. And, that's, uh, and a lot of people are like that. Uh, they have these things going on in their life and it makes them vulnerable to false teachers. And it, uh, so we have to be careful about what we read, study, what we believe, and uh, what we teach, and what we let our children get into. Second Peter, verse 2. Somebody read 4 through 9. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment 
and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterwards would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of the temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. How much further? Yep, that was good nine. Yep. Yeah. Peter's given a couple of examples about uh, <clears throat> false teachers and judgment. About uh, how he warns against false teachers' world. You know, their day's going to come, and they're going to be in a heap of trouble, so to speak, when they uh, when it does it does happen. But he used like the uh, angels that was you know cast out of heaven because of their uh, wickedness, and he also used Sodom and Gomorrah how it was destroyed because of their wickedness. And a lot. He was rescued, we know, but that was because because of God's grace. Now the the things that Lot was into, it was his own choice that he went there. He chose that land instead of choosing the other land that uh, Abraham chose. Lot wanted to go there because of all the it appealed to his flesh. All the activity, the people, the places, the things, I mean, it was exciting times and that kind of a thing at first, so it drew a lot to that. And it was his own choice, his, his own predicament. Uh, his soul was vexed every day because he was tormented because of where he was living at and things that are going on around him, he was like almost like part of it. Uh, he was living there and couldn't get out of it, so to speak. But even though his own, his, and it's an example to us that sometimes the choices we make in our life, it causes a great deal of grief and heartache and trouble, and uh, we're just you know miserable because of it. And we, we have nobody to blame but our own self. We done it. We're doing it. You know, we got ourselves into it. You know, it's our own fault. Decisions that we made. But God, in His uh, boundless, His unlimited grace and His mercy, if we cry out to Him, He can deliver us from that thing and help us get out of whatever we're into, uh, wherever we're going, or the people around us or whatever and help deliver us and get us back where we need to be at. Praise because he loves us Jesus. in such and such and such a great way. Because he's going to drudge the wicked and he can spare us from temptation and deliver us from temptations. And now sometimes the word says that the, the unrighteous will be saved for the day of judgment. And what that means is that somebody that really has that hard heart and has no intentions, and the Lord knows they have no intention of turning away from their ways and turning to him He's going to put things in their life, put people in their life to make sure they stay unjust. Not even give them an opportunity to come to Him. Because he knows not going to, He's not going to waste uh, the good Word of God on them. So He'll put things in their place to make them, that they're going to stay right where they're at. So when the Day of Judgment gets there, He already knows what to do with them because they're unjust folks. There's no, uh, no hope of salvation in them. But the, uh, God offers everybody that wants it the opportunity, uh, but He chooses not. And he knows you're not going to choose and never will. Uh, you remain that way until judgment gets here. And then they'll be very happy about it. But uh, we, we, Some of the stories that I read and study in the Sunday school lessons and this one and some other ones, it just reminds me of how good God is to us. Amen. In spite of the wicked folks that we've been or even maybe the wicked folks that we are now, I don't know, but we know God loves and he provides. And he'll help us through. He'll help us turn away from anything. Uh, to get us back in, the, in right standing with Him. Uh, he sent Jesus to die for our sins, and because of that, we all have the right to accept it and turn away from our wicked ways and turn to Him and, and be saved. But a lot of these false teachers, they use, uh, uh, they appeal to the sinful nature of greed and lust and pleasure and power and manipulate people. And uh, we have to just be very careful. Uh, we have to... Uh, Know our word. The most important thing we can do is study, read, study, read, study, read, mm -hmm. study, and read. And the more we do, the better off we'll be. So we might not understand it all, but we'll understand quite a bit if we spend time mm -hmm. in the word and make uh, make time for it. Time's counting down. Okay, Second Peter three three through mm, Second Peter chapter three three 
through 7. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they were willing, willing are, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water in the water, whereby the world, the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition, perdition of ungodly men. <clears throat> in the last day, it's going to be scoffers, false teachers, people who are uh, mocking the word, saying, "Well, you know, he's been saying Christ is coming back for thousands of years now. He ain't coming. That's no different." People are what they do. They still do the same thing they used to do. I mean, I ain't believing in it anymore. Uh, and they're going to teach others about the same thing. About, I don't know, trying to pull them away from it. And when I have somebody come up to me like that, I go, thank you for that. And I said, I, I tell them, because it's, you were talked about in my Bible in the last days. That means my Lord is getting ready to come down to get me. Yeah. So, thank you for, for this, for this, because they talked about you in in here. Confirmation. Yes. <laughs> hey, so the word says this is going to happen. And, and here it is. You're right here telling me the same thing the word says you're going to tell me. <laughs> and you don't even read it. <laughs> <laughs> it must be real. It must be the truth. Because it's really happening right in front of my, right in front of my eyes. <clears throat> There's been plenty of those guys around. And uh, Peter warned that they're going to be scoffers in the last days. And, you know, we can turn on the TV. Pick up the newspaper and read about all kinds of stuff that's going on where people don't believe and are trying to pull people away from the Lord. But we know that uh, God makes promises and He keeps His promises. He's as good as any uh, any promise that we kept. He's going to keep His for sure. We might fail, but He's not. And if Paul continue, Peter continues to warn about false teachers, explaining that as the time gets closer and closer to the Lord's return, they're going to get more and more. Try to go send them. the closer the Lord gets coming back, <coughs> they're gonna send more out. Like a balloon yeah. or a pot or something. Oh my god. Probably Sylvie getting ready for class. Blow up balloons and pop them. <laughs> they're gonna be more and more. <laughs> peace be still, peace be still. My nerve peel is not working this morning, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> my heart does not go on jumped out of my chest. <laughs> Y'all let that happen in Walmart, boy. I, everybody goes down. <laughs> <laughs> like a gunshot, gunshot. Yeah, exactly. Oh. We're glad that uh, the Lord you know, intervenes in our lives and helps us through. Sometimes we get confused ourselves about what we read, what we study, and what we hear. And we need to know the truth. And, you know, I found myself at times not knowing what, exactly what to do, so I'd spend time in prayer and ask the Lord to help me so I would know the truth and not be confused about what I've heard or uh, what I've read, and, uh, and i got to share this with you, but there was a time when I was a new, a new Christian, and uh, you know the Bible talks about say, pray without ceasing, pray in faith, well, uh, I was I was being heard two different things from two different people, one about you, you pray and you pray and you pray and you pray until something happens, and one person was telling me, oh, they're Christians, that you pray one time, you believe on it, you stand on it, and that's it. You, you turn it over, and that's it. And I'm thinking, Lord, what, you know, what, what, uh, what am I supposed to do? This person told me to continue praying the same prayer again and again. That's what told me to pray one time and forget about it. So I came here, it was Thanksgiving, I fasted. I stayed here to sleep for six hours. Because I wanted to know the answer to this question, because it had a lot to do with the remainder of my life. So I walked around, and I prayed, and I prayed. I said, Lord, what am I supposed to do? He said, go, and the Lord told me, I heard him. He said, go pick up a Bible. Open it up anywhere you want. Stop at any page. Read the first thing that you see. So I walked up the field. I'm the Bible. I turned it up and looked at it. And the first thing I read is where Jesus prayed the same prayer, the same words, again and again. The answer to my question. I said, okay. That's it. Amen. So ever since then, I, I prayed and I prayed. And look, 20 years later, the same prayer 
Look what has happened. I think the, and I'm not taking it up for the people, but this is what I've heard, the same thing. When I was younger, it was, you know, the um, some of the old, the elders of the church would say, you know, God knows your heart, you pray about it, and that's it. He knows your request, and that's it. Then it was pray without ceasing and that kind of thing. And I kind of did the same thing, not, you know, not the exact word or whatever, but it was basically, well, which way do I go? You know what I mean? Like, my mom has been praying the same prayer for several years, you know, and that kind of thing. But my, what I got, my answer was pray, but don't worry. Mm -hmm. And see, what I was doing was putting my worry into my prayer. Like, I would pray, but I was putting my anxieties into it. Like, almost, like I didn't, I was a half-hearted prayer. You know what I mean? So, you know, pray without ceasing, but don't worry about the outcome. Is what I what he, you know I got out of it. When God's in control. He's gonna He's gonna make things happen. But ever since that time, uh, I've you know I'll pray and pray the same prayer over and over again until I get an answer, or yes or no, or maybe mm -hmm. whatever it is. But I don't I don't give up. Mm -hmm. I keep on uh, I keep on keeping on, in spite of the problem. I'm afraid if I stop asking, he'll think, oh, she forgot about it. She don't want it anymore. Like a Christmas present. <laughs> He's my father. I'm well, I'm treating just like it's Christmas time. I want it. I want it, Daddy. I want it. <laughs> you, well, he's our father. We're supposed to ask for it. You're not going to get it. Well, I'm lying. I've been a good girl. <laughs> then all of a sudden you do get it. That's right. I remember a prayer of little girls. A little girl was running to uh, running to Sunday school, and she was running so fast she kept saying she kept praying. Lord, said, Lord, don't let me be late to Sunday school. Lord, don't let me be late to Sunday school. Lord, don't let me be late to Sunday school. And she kept on running and she kept on praying. Then she fell down, skin her knees. She got back up and started running again. She said, Lord, don't let me be late to Sunday school, but don't push me either. <laughs> <laughs> That what Madison prayed on the bicycle. <laughs> I'm just going to scrub. Oh, I know, you're so scored up. Okay, let's uh, attend that. Uh, right, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, 8 through 13. I'll go ahead. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they will come. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we all look forward to it. And we expect scoffers of the world as they come around to, you know, to try to do what they can to pull us away from the coming of Christ, not believing it, that things are going to go on, you know, as it, as as they are. Uh, but we know there's a judgment day coming for some and a, a glorious day coming for others. <clears throat> and Paul warns us to, I mean, Peter warns us to stay in expectancy of Christ's return. To look forward to that, and we know that sooner or later it's going to happen. He's going to come around and it's going to show up, and uh, a lot of people are going to be. Uh, Amazed, so to speak. But in, in spite of all the people that are out there trying to pull us away, or trying to pull people away, we have to stay, uh, be a steadfast people like we talked about before. And don't give up. Keep on believing, keep on standing, keep on living the life, keep on talking the talk and walking the walk in front of our family, our friends, our co workers, in front of the world. And not be uh, swayed by uh, the doubters and the scoffers that are out there. And, uh, we know, we know the truth. We know what's going to happen. and <clears throat> uh, We look forward to it. And no one is immune from the temptation of, uh, of evil. And now evil doesn't necessarily mean, you know, going out being an axe murderer or something like that. But evil can be just denying the Lord and doubting the Lord. 
God, that's evil. Mm-hmm. You know, God doesn't have a, a time slot like we do, like we're looking at the watch and we have the clock here for time. You know, a year, a day is a thousand years, and a thousand years today, there's no time frame because eternity is uh, eternal, it's forever. So there's no, uh, you know, the Lord doesn't look at things like we look at them. There's a whole big different uh, ball game there. Everything that we have, all the money we've saved up, the clothes we got, the stuff we got, it's all going you know, to go. It's, gonna be, uh, it's good to have while, we're, while we need it and while we want it, but sooner or later, it's all going to be gone. All it's going to be left is our, our soul and our spirit. And, uh, we got a new body and we're going to be a new, uh, new creation. And uh, we're going to be with the Lord. And uh, have a whole new, uh, whole new neighborhood, a whole new earth, a whole new heaven. I think it'll be all, all brand new. We'll be new. New body, mm-hmm. and uh, it'd be a. Uh, you've probably seen that movie, uh, Heaven Is For Real, about the little boy who mm-hmm. went to heaven and he told his daddy that uh, everybody in heaven is young, nobody's not uh, worn out, <laughs> old or whatever. I look at the pictures, and uh, I, I think it's grand. I mean, I don't, I, I, don't, I can't say I've been there and done it. I don't know, but uh, time will tell. But the word does tell us we'll get a new, we'll, we'll get a new body. We'll be like him. You can uh, add it to that or take it away from it, however you want to do it. But I look forward to the day when the uh, Lord calls us all home. We get to leave this wicked place. Not to worry about the uh, fervent heat anymore. <laughs> worry about the, uh, like the streets of gold and sea of glass. Right, one more. Turn to the book of Jude. Jude chapter 1. Right before Revelation. Jude chapter 1, somebody read 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unwares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lavishness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And these people were put there, they're here for that reason. And you know, they take the grace of God. We know that uh, God's grace is so so uh, grand that you know what you know he'll forgive us for anything we have done. And uh, even if we do it again he'll forgive us for it because he's uh, he's gracious. But some people take that grace and they turn it to such a way that you can go out and just sin 90 miles an hour all you want. And it's okay. Because God's going to forgive you. And God will forgive you if you turn to Him and repent of your sins. But uh, Paul says not to use God's grace as a green light to sin. To take because we, we believe that God's going to forgive us no matter what we do. We just go out and keep on doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And living a life that pleases the flesh and not living a life that pleases the Lord. That's not what the grace is. That's not what God wants. But some people try to take the grace of God and they'll be doing that in their last days about taking that and trying to pull people away from righteousness and pull them into selfishness and greed and lust and power and all that kind of stuff that pulls away from the Lord. But the Lord wants us to be found spotless and blameless before Him and because of the blood of Christ we will if we trust in Him and believe in, in, in that and uh, accept the gift that He's offered to us. He's on the, uh, oh, Okay. Uh, last one, 17 through 23. Jude chapter 1, 17 to 23. I didn't ring the bell yet. He rang, he rang the first one. Okay. Where are we reading? Uh, 17 through 23. Jude chapter 1. But the love of remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. There these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. 
and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pouring them out of the fire, hating even their garments spotted by the flesh. Mm -hmm. Want me to read the next two verses? <laughs> Just two more. Now to him that is able to keep you from fall, falling and to prevent you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. 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 Yep, that's good. Yeah, that's supposed to make our brothers stop. Hey, Jesus. Because it helped the uh, land post, so to speak. Lean on those. Help them through. Uh, so I'd like to close out in prayer. I can. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we're able to be in your house and hear your word, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, for the next service. Lord, we pray that you'll. Give us open ears and open hearts and open minds, Lord, that we may be humble to your word, that your will be done, Lord, and that, that hearts will be mended, Lord, and chains will be broken, Lord. Amen. 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 All right.